Let's get more on this from William Lawrence, who is a professor of political science and international affairs at American University. He's with us here in Washington. William, great to have you back. How has this ceasefire so quickly turned into war, and can anything be done at this point to stop strikes like these? Um, well, not exactly to stop strikes like these, because they're virtually undefendable. This was a new Scud missile launched into a residential neighborhood um, in an area where we've already had two previous attacks over the last two uh, last week. Um, and that second uh, two attacks was since the ceasefire was declared. So there's no way to defend against it, really. What you do is you get the Armenian side to stop sending the missiles, and that is being negotiated out of Moscow. I think it's very significant that a Russian minister called this a deliberate attack, uh, and many are calling it a war crime. Uh, and so that seems to be a little bit of a shift in the Russian rhetoric um, from one that was taking more of a neutral position and seeming to look like they were going to defend Armenia if need be, and they weren't taking sides. But the, the scaling up of language means that the Russians may begin to hold Armenia to account for war crimes such as these. And of course, um, there are claims of war crimes from the other side in the territory that the Zeri side has seized with somewhat of a Russian blessing. Um, and so Russia is not tamping this down enough yet, but they need to. You know, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo made a, a controversial comment earlier today. He said that we now have Turks that have stepped in and provided resources to Azerbaijan, increasing the risk, increasing the firepower that's taking place in this historic fight. How do you see uh, not just that comment, but also Turkey's involvement in this conflict? Um, certainly, it's a little bit of a shift of uh, rhetoric from the Americans. It doesn't really point to the worst of what's going on. And certainly, weapons provision is not only happening by the Turks, but it's happening by Russia, which is major sales to Azerbaijan, by Israel. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, a number of countries, uh, some of the same countries, are selling arms to the Armenian side. I don't think selling arms is the main problem here. There are claims of mercenaries be sent, uh, being sent. That's a problem. Um, but really, uh, what's going on is right now, the Armenians are occupying Azeri territory. And then the Azeris have just reoccupied territory back from the Armenian occupied territory, which the Armenians are seeing as an occupation. And the countries in the Minsk group, including the United States, that are in the best position to tamp things down aren't really tamping things down enough yet. There's probably going to have to be some arm twisting. And now that we add the card of war crimes, um, there could be threats of international sanctions against those responsible for war crimes, that sort of thing, like we've seen in other uh, war theaters. But right now, the international community has been caught flat-footed. The Russian brokered ceasefire from last Saturday has failed. Um, the war is escalating. The war crimes and attacks in civilian areas are escalating. Uh, and we're going to have to have international mediation stepped up even handed uh, to get this thing tamped back down again. William, I'm going to hit you with a loaded question, and you kind of touched on it at the end of that answer there, which is what is the way out of this? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. What is the? Yeah, what is the way out of this? The road out of this is what I'm hearing. Um, I, I mean, the way out of this is a mediation. Now, Iran has, their territory has been hit with missiles. Russia, um, and they're dealing with both sides, including more of a relationship with Azerbaijan. Russia is dealing with both sides. Uh, and most of the other players uh, have sort of equal equities and equal interests in tamping this down. On the other hand, Turkey really doesn't. Turkey's one of the sole outside players that's really only backing one side. And there's a lot of explanations as to why they're doing it. I don't think it's primarily economic or military, as uh, Pompeo suggested. Um, but it is true that Turkey's involved in defending Turkic populations in, in a number of theaters. Uh, and they don't really have an interest yet in tamping things down. So part of the negotiation is through Istanbul. Um, it's going to have to be separated from Russian Turkish negotiations that are, um, you know, in Syria and Libya. This has to be separated from that. Um, but ultimately, 
it won't be until the Armenian Azeri forces are being told by their international backers that this has to be uh, uh, tamped down, that it will be tamped down. And I think ultimately, as I've said today and I've said previously on TRT, I think there's going to be concessions of a fairly large swath of territory in southern Nagorno-Karabakh area that will be given back to Azerbaijan as part of this latest settlement. William Lawrence, we really appreciate your analysis. I want to just bring our viewers back to these live pictures out of Genja, where we're your way to rescue civilians that have been injured in what is the aftermath of an Armenian missile attack in that city. A second city was also attacked uh, close to that. Minga Chavir, and we are being told right now that the death toll has gone up. Uh, we were reporting six people have been killed. There are now 10, and children are among those that were wounded in that attack. William Lawrence, thanks for that. We'll have more for our viewers on that story as it develops.